Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm diving into the eerie and iconic world of the 1982 horror classic Poltergeist. As always, I'm your host Steve, and let's dive right into it. So, where do I even start with a legendary movie like Poltergeist? It's directed by Toby Hooper, officially. Although, growing up, when I first watched this movie back in 82, when it came out, I always just assumed it was a Steven Spielberg movie, and so did everyone else I've ever known. I actually found out later, many years later, that this movie was directed by Toby Hooper. And there's some question as to whether Steven Spielberg directed it, or Toby Hooper directed it, or Steven Spielberg's uh, production basically kind of took over the direction from Toby Hooper. Honestly, to me, it never mattered. This movie was always a Steven Spielberg movie to me. That being said, this movie destroyed me as a child. I don't know why I loved it so much because it scared the pants off me. Obviously, I was pretty young at the time, but I vividly remember the trailers and promos for this movie with Carol Ann saying, Yeah, even the TV commercials and trailers for this movie were creepy, especially since the trailers and promos put so much emphasis on the television. You have to understand that back then, the TV was a gathering place. It isn't like it is now where there's a TV in every room and everyone watches something different. The family watched TV together and that was really normal. So it just seemed a little more scary that whatever this ghost story was had something to do with the TV before you ever even saw the movie. This film had a massive cultural impact at the time. It was parodied, it was talked about, it was basically an event movie. And of course, you know, coming from Steven Spielberg or Toby Hooper, however you want to say it, gave the film an air of credibility that it may not have had otherwise. Oh, and I haven't even mentioned that a little film that Steven Spielberg actually directed came out one week after Poltergeist. And that was E.T., which turned out to be the biggest box office success of all time at the time. So yeah, it didn't hurt to have two films doing great at the box office with the same director's name attached. And with both films being rated PG, you could take the family to see either one. Although, I would certainly argue that Poltergeist isn't the most family-friendly film to be rated PG. You gotta remember, PG-13 didn't come along until 1984 because of Steven Spielberg, mainly. To put the success of this movie into context, you gotta remember back then, if a movie was doing pretty well, it stayed in the theaters for a long time. Poltergeist was in the theaters for 31 weeks. That's the better part of a year. If you want a comparison, E.T., which like I said, ended up being the biggest box office success ever, was in the theaters for 51 weeks, nearly a full year. And this wasn't some, you know, kid-friendly alien story or space opera. It was a horror movie an effectively scary horror movie. And it was such a huge success, it's kind of mind blowing. Now let's talk about the movie itself and our main family, the Freelings. I gotta start with the fact that what scared me about this movie as a child wasn't that I actually related to this family because believe me, I did not. They seemed like just a rich family that lived on another planet by my estimation because of where I live, this was completely different. Although there are some things in here, and I have to say that Steven Spielberg and Toby Hooper are really good at making relatable situations. So yeah, I couldn't really relate to this family because I didn't live in a place that had a tree outside of my window. But guess what? I was scared of having a tree outside of my window. It didn't matter where I lived. And in my young life, I grew up in Raleigh, North Carolina. Plenty of thunderstorms. So imagine my fright when I saw the scene of the thunderstorm and the tree outside of the young boy's window that reaches in and starts to swallow him. That absolutely terrified me for years. I actually had a hard time even watching that scene again for many years. And of course, there's the scene with the clown toy that seems to just kind of move around the room and then does a jump scare on the kid. Look, I'm not scared of clowns. This movie, I'm surprised, actually didn't make me scared of clowns. But that scene absolutely petrified me. I had a hard time watching that scene for many years to come. So yeah, I couldn't actually really relate to the family dynamic, but some of the, 
the fights that happen in this movie are relatable to anyone, no matter what your socioeconomic situation is. Of course, it helps that all the actors here give really believable performances, and you do believe that they're just a normal family. This is a movie with tons of memorable scenes and memorable lines, but we have to start out with the great special effects. There are so many wonderful special effects in this movie. It's really astounding. Now, of course, by today's standards, a lot of these effects look a little dated, but back then you have to understand, watching a guy peel his own face off, it was disgusting and fascinating at the same time. The Freeling's house imploding in on itself, it's a thing of beauty. And it really makes you appreciate the amount of time and effort it took for these artists to create these effects without the assistance of CGI. Even something as simple as TV static is used to a tremendous effect in this movie. Because you got to remember back then, everyone had a TV set and everyone experienced static in the same way that you see it in this film, right? Whether you're up late and there was just no more programming on and it was static, or you're on a channel using bunny ears and there was a channel that didn't have anything on it and there was static. That static is something that everyone knew, everyone understood. So the fact that it's in the movie and it's used in such an effective way to convey this ghost story, it just elevates this movie even more. But what good are great effects if you don't have great characters? And my two favorite characters in this movie are absolutely Carol Ann, played by Heather O'Rourke, and Tangina, played by Zelda Rubenstein. Now, there's an entire supposed curse around this film and the films in general. I'm not going to get all into that. Feel free to look it up. But Heather O'Rourke tragically died in 1988 at the age of 12. But she gives a fantastic performance as Carol Ann. She's the name that you remember if you watched this movie back then. If no one else, you remembered Carol Ann. And of course, you can never forget the iconic performance by Zelda Rubenstein as Tangina. She was a character in this film that everyone came away imitating and remembering next to maybe Carol Ann. The rest of the cast of this film is great as well. Well, like I said, I'm not going to get all into that. What is this movie actually about? Well, here's the super short version. The Freelings are a suburban family that starts to notice some strange things going on in their house. They eventually have to call some uh, professionals, basically ghost hunters, to try to figure out what's going on and what they can do to stop it. When that goes sideways, they have to hire Tangina, the spiritualist, to try to come in, cleanse the house, and get Carol Ann back from the other side. There's a point in the film that you find out the subdivision that the Freeling's house is built on was actually an ancient Native American burial ground. And that's why they're having all these hauntings in their house. If for some reason anyone watching this video has never seen Poltergeist, please do yourself a favor and watch it. I understand that nowadays it might not seem that scary, but you have to remember that back in 1982, this shit was horrifying. Things have changed over the years, of course, and now people are much more accustomed to scarier movies and you know bigger budgets and just all kinds of crazy things happening. But when this movie came out, this wasn't the norm. This movie was revolutionary when it came to horror. It was legitimately scary. I am still not quite comfortable just sitting down to watch it. I have no problem watching. I'm not scared of it. It's just that it puts such fear in me as a child. I still feel that now. I tried to avoid a lot of major spoilers with the movie, but by now this movie's over 40 years old. Who cares about spoilers? Really, go look it up. Watch it. It's a great movie. Less than two hours. You'll thank me later. So once again, thanks for watching my channel, like, share, and subscribe. I'll be back with more. Bye. This has been